So we've got our little rotary pump here and these are super simple pumps. You crank the handle around, it's got a couple veins in there that move, pulls fluid up from the bottom, pushes it out through the top. And as you can see, this one is, this one's pretty stuck. So we're gonna take it apart. There's not much to these little things, so hopefully it won't be a very difficult repair. I'll be honest, I cheated a little bit, but you'll see it right there. I looked in through one of the, uh, the ports here and I saw some rust, but I didn't know exactly how much to expect. And we've got, got a good little bit here. So you can see the way this works is when it goes around, these veins move and they come out and they create the pumping action. So I'm going to try and remove this vein assembly and then we'll start cleaning these pieces up. There we go. Now I'm using a brass brush on the drill. You could use steel and I'm sure it would be just fine, but using brass, I don't have to worry at all about any kind of microscopic scratches or scarring or anything else on the inside of this pump that might affect the way it works. Give her a shot of fluid film to help keep everything from rusting till we get finished and just lube everything up. If you guys haven't, aren't familiar with, with fluid film here, most auto parts stores have it, or I will link to it on Amazon down in the description. It is really, really good stuff for pretty much any kind of like lubricating or corrosion prevention or anything like that. It goes on kind of, thick for an aerosol but then it dries and it leaves this really nice nice film and does a great job of preventing rust i'm a big fan and if you buy it through the link on the description of this video amazon does throw the channel a small percentage as a way to say thank you for me sending you over there so it's a way you can help support the channel and help me continue making content like this that doesn't cost you anything extra Certainly not perfect, but vastly, vastly improved over what we started with. So I'm gonna coat this thing pretty heavily, probably more heavily than I need to. And then we're gonna start cleaning up this little vein assembly. So here's our vein assembly, and you can see we've got these three little veins. These are, I don't, these feel like maybe they're some kind of plastic but they have springs that don't feel like they want to come out of there, so I'm going to leave well enough alone. But our handle has a little cog on it that goes in right there. That drives this. As this spins around, those little, uh, little brushes grab and move fluid. So let's, let's de-rust this. Before we go too far, let me show you how rusty this is. You can see that's all heavy, heavy rust right there. That's some kind of buildup. I think that's worn brush material. That's a lot more rust. I mean, this whole thing just needs a good cleaning. Hopefully that's gonna be the whole problem because these are very simple and really only have a couple of very basic seals in them that could go bad. Spring fell out. Cool. They do come out okay. So we got most of the exterior stuff off, but you can see down between those grooves is still pretty, pretty nasty. And that's where these little brushes or whatever you want to call them, that's where these things actually ride is in there. So it's pretty important that they be able to move in and out correctly. So I got to... We're gonna to have to clean that up somehow. 
I can fit the entire block in here. That's cool. See how easily that moves in there now? That's what we're looking for. So this is held centered by the crank assembly and as it goes around, these three veins create suction here, pull it up, push it out there. And then our little pawl, our little tab there, just lines up right on. Just line that up in one of the little slots there. Position it where it goes like so. And that's going to be finished. Now you can see I don't have the paper gasket that goes here. Um, and I'm not really worried about trying to make one. I know some people might not be crazy about the idea, but I am just going to glue this up with some RTV. Now, I know a lot of people are not fans of using RTV for various things, but in a situation like this, this is very low pressure, really no pressure, and it's not like if it does leak, it's going to be difficult for me to come back and repair at a later date because everything is just right there and super exposed. And for as quick and easy and simple as that was, I am I'm going to let that give that a shot before we go to the trouble of trying to make gaskets and everything else like that. Not saying we won't necessarily end up there if this doesn't work, but try this first. And remember, don't tighten anything until they're all in loosely. Now you can see here some of this excess RTV squished out the side. A lot of guys would try to wipe that off right now, but I prefer to wait and let that cure and let that set up and then shave it off with a razor blade. In my opinion, it comes out a little bit cleaner. But regardless, we're going to let this thing cure and let that sealant set up. We'll come back to it in a minute. All right, I told you guys we were going to give this a couple of days for the RTV to set up and dry, and it's been about two months. So everything should be nice and dry. I'm just going to run it real quick into this bucket to make sure it's working the way it's supposed to. It's not going to be staying on this tank. I'm going to be putting an electric pump on here. But this is what we're going to use to test with, so let's test. Whoa, as long as I don't fall off and break my neck. Hey, look at that. We're pumping. I'm going to call this successfully fixed. So those of you that are paying real close attention will notice the pump we just tested a second ago, that yellow one, is not this black one that we rebuilt. Uh, like I said, it's been a couple of months since I actually did this and I rebuilt both of those pumps and promptly forgot which one I did on camera and which one I just did to get done. So we're gonna drop the one we did rebuild on camera down in the tank here and see, see how that went for us. Are you going to cooperate or not? You don't want to cooperate. Annoying, but good YouTube content. I shouldn't need to prime it, but I might. There we go. Alright, so our little Lincoln barrel pump that we rebuilt does work. It just doesn't like 
self-priming on kind of thin fluids like this. We threw a little 1540 in it. That gave it everything it needed to work, and that's fine because this pump is not going to be used for any kind of fuel transfer. This is going to be used in a bulk oil drum, if I can speak properly. We have this this little electric pump that's actually not little, that is a 20 gallon per minute GPI pump. I bought it used, as you guys saw a second ago, it's not working. In another video, we're gonna take a look at why that is and get that fixed. That's gonna be the fuel pump for this transfer tank. And this transfer tank is actually gonna end up on the back of the F450, along with a couple of toolboxes, an air compressor, and some more service-related stuff. So subscribe if that's the kind of thing you guys wanna see. Thank you for watching, and more later. Who is texting me? Hi, Jared. <laughs>I'm about to be putting this pump away in storage for a little while and I don't want to have any more rust issues. So I'm just pouring it full of that 1540 and I'm gonna rotate it around a few times, make sure everything gets coated with a good coat of heavy oil lubricant and then, then wipe it off and plug these holes up and put it on a shelf for a little while until I, until I need it. Will you sit there and drain, or will you fall in the bucket? Sit there and drain. Cool.